Hi class, in this recording we're going to be covering blood. So we're going to be talking about the histology of blood. And this is going to be an exercise number 24 of your lab manuals. So as so we're looking at this terminology here, we have formed elements. And when we think of a formed element class, I just want you to think of anything that is made, that's put in the blood. So anything that's not a liquid that's in the blood. Typically when we think of a formed element, generally speaking, we think of cells blood cells and there's different kinds of blood cells we have erythrocytes and leukocytes and thrombocytes so when we think of the erythrocytes those erythrocytes are also known as red blood cells leukocytes are also known as white blood cells and thrombocytes are also known as platelets so let's look at some of the histology of our erythrocytes so here in the histology guide website, we just have a plain Jane photomicrograph of some blood. And I love this. This is the, the glorious mess that is blood photomicrographs. And as I'm zooming in here, you'll notice that there's these little red circles or kind of light pink circles. These are the erythrocytes. They are by far the most common kind of formed element or blood cell within our human blood. And it's important that you can familiarize yourself with these erythrocytes. We're going to go ahead and just annotate one just so I can say that I've circled it for you. So, hey, check it out right here. This is a erythrocyte right there. And as we look at these erythrocytes, they're going to be our measuring stick. We're going to use them as our frame of reference as we look at the leukocytes and the thrombocytes. So that was the erythrocyte. Let me go ahead and... Alt tab here. There we go. Now let's look at leukocytes or white blood cells. Now, if I zoom out here, you can see here that there are these purple cells that have nuclei. These nucleated cells are going to be the leukocytes. And while I'm talking about nuclei, I should also mention that the erythrocytes do not have any nuclei, they are anucleate cells. So as we look at these leukocytes we're going to use our erythrocytes as a frame of reference and i'm going to start with the single most common kind of leukocyte and that is a neutrophil so here's just a textbook perfect neutrophil for us i'm going to go ahead and circle it and as we look at this neutrophil that neutrophil is going to be wider in diameter about double the diameter of your typical erythrocyte so about twice the diameter and as we look at the nuclei within this neutrophil we have a multi a single nuclei that's multi lobes there's multiple lobes here we see one two three lobes and then there's these little isthmuses or ismi connecting the lobes of the neutrophil nuclei something else that's worth mentioning about the neutrophil is is that a neutrophil is one of the granule sites it is a leukocyte that has these speckles or specks also known as granules within its cytoplasm so oh sorry wrong button there my bad let me clear the screen that's what i meant to click so we have just looked at a neutrophil and that is going to be the first granule site that we'll cover our next granule site that we're going to cover is the eosinophil and this one's a little bit harder to find. So I'm going to go back here and I just need to zoom out a little bit and I'm just kind of scanning, scanning and looking for something that's bright pink and ooh, there's then that's kind of cool looking. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Right here we can see that there's a nucleus. So we have a multi-lobe nuclei. So we know it's uh, we see this nuclei. We know that it's a leukocyte and we have pink granules. So here this cell is known as a eosinophil and it's named eosinophil because of the eosin dye that's used to stain the granules within it so that this pink color has a very specific name it's eosin and because these leukocytes absorb eosin we call them eosinophils let's look at diameter here the diameter of an eosinophil is approximately double the diameter of our comparable erythrocyte. 
And then our next leukocyte is the basophil. This is our last granule site. And I should also mention all the granule sites end with fill, fill, fill. So as we're looking at the basophil, it's going to have granules and it's going to be a very dark purple one. It's also the least abundant of the granule sites or of all leukocytes. So it's a little bit harder to find. Um, and let's see what we have right here. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not happy with that one. Uh, I'm going to punt and use the digital histology site. So if I go back to our lab objective sheet, digital histology is a great resource that pre-labels everything for you. Histology guide better mimics real life when you're looking at an actual photomicrograph or microscope slide. But I'm going to use the digital histology link right here. And I'm just going to scroll ahead. to get to our basophil. It's such a pain in the tush to find a basophil. When I t Ms. Laundress and I teach lab in person, we usually will spend mm, 10 to 15 minutes looking for a basophil on our slide. So here I'm cheating. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the digital histology site that's already pre-identified a basophil for us. So as I look at this basophil, I want to first emphasize, hey, look at the granules that are within it. Basophils have dark purple granules within them. And then if we look at the diameter of the basophil, the cross-sectional diameter is, hmm, that's kind of a oxy or redundant right there, cross-sectional diameter. I digress. The diameter of a basophil is approximately double, or a little, we'll say 1.5 the times the diameter of a erythrocyte. So in other words, bigger than a erythrocyte. Um, but not more than double a erythrocyte. So those are our three granule sites. Up next we have the A granule sites. And these are A, meaning without A granule, without granule. And then if you forgot, site is a suffix that means cell. We have the lymphocyte and the monocyte. And I'm going to go ahead and use the digital histology site or can meet the histology guide site because it's a little bit more difficult for you as students to use. So we're going to look for lymphocytes and monocytes. Lymphocytes are about the same size as a erythrocyte. They are characterized by having a nucleus that fills up almost the entire cell and very little cytoplasm. So here is our lymphocyte. And notice the diameter of our lymphocyte here is about the same as the diameter of a erythrocyte. So in other words, a lymphocyte is about the same size as a red blood cell. And as we look at this lymphocyte in this corner right here where I'm drawing the arrow, you can see just a teensy weensy bit of cytoplasm. The overwhelming majority, the overwhelming volume of the lymphocyte is going to be made up of its nucleus. So that was the lymphocyte. Wrong button. There we go. Uh, let's find our... So we just covered lymphocyte. Let's move on to monocyte. And while we're looking for the monocyte, that's characterized by a very large leukocyte or a very large white blood cell. And there are... Not terribly common, but we can find them if we look around. I might get a little impatient on you, though, uh, for the sake of this record. Oh, I just found a basophil. Check out this guy right here. Oh, wait, no, that is a lymphocyte. False alarm. Ooh, I like this. Oh, I just hit the jackpot. There's a couple monocytes. Uh, let's look at this guy right here. This is a very stereotypical monocyte. The monocytes are among some of the largest leukocytes in our bodies. As we look at the monocyte, we can see that there's a horseshoe-shaped nucleus. Wow, it doesn't get any prettier than that. And so instead of having a segmented or multi-lobe nuclei, the monocyte's going to have the horseshoe-shaped nuclei in a perfect world, although very rarely you actually see it like this beautiful. Um, I also want to emphasize to you the size of the monocyte. So 
And when we're looking at size, we use our erythrocytes as our frame of reference. So there's the cross-sectional diameter of a erythrocyte. And here is the cross-sectional diameter of a monocyte. A monocyte is more over double the diameter of a erythrocyte. The diameter of a monocyte is more than double the diameter of a erythrocyte. So use those erythrocytes as a frame of reference. All right, we've covered all the granule sites. We've covered all of the A granule sites. That means we've covered every single leukocyte you need to know for your lab exam. Let's move on to uh, red bone marrow and megakaryocytes. So as we look at red bone marrow, red bone marrow is a tissue. And within this tissue, this red bone marrow, we make mo most of our red blood cell, or excuse me, most of the cells, most of the blood cells of our bodies, including the erythrocytes, the leukocytes, and the thrombocytes. So I need to close these down right there. And we're going to go to the histology guide. So I, you'll find that I have a strong preference for histology guides. So right now, what we're looking at right now is just a smear of red bone marrow tissue. And if we zoom in on it, actually, this isn't very representative of red bone marrow. Let's go here. This is more representative of what you're going to see in lab with an actual microscope slide. So as we look at this red bone marrow, our red bone marrow is going to be over here on the right side of our screen. And this red bone marrow is going to be characterized by dark pigmentation and then these clear speckles. These clear polka dots represent individual fat cells or adipocytes or adipocytes, however you say it. As we look at the red bone marrow, it's going to be segmented by these large pink bands. And these large pink bands are referred to as trabeculae of, re of the bone, spongy bone tissue or trabecular bone tissue. Now, just because we're on the slide, uh, I want to highlight on the left side of our screen, we have yellow bone marrow. And we also have the trabeculae of the spongy bone tissue right here. Another name for yellow bone marrow is adipose. It's just fat. Now, if I go ahead here and just advance a slide for us. This is very similar to what you'll see in lab with our microscope slides. So you'll see this bone tissue right here, these trabeculae, and you can see individual osteocytes within that trabeculae. And then within the red bone marrow that makes up the majority of our field of view, we're going to see some very large cells. These incredibly large cells are going to be the megakaryocytes. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and circle one right now in green. There I'm circling a megakaryocyte in green right there. Another one over there. Mega is a prefix that means large or big. In the metric system, mega means one million. So as we're looking at our lab objective sheet, for those of you taking notes, you might want to circle mega and then write big next to it. And these mega karyocytes here on this screen from our histology guide are also going to be those very, very large cells. And what ends up happening with these incredibly large cells is that fragments of them will bud off and flake off. And these fragments that are flaking off end up into the bloodstream and get transformed into thrombocytes or platelets. So the megakaryocyte will slough off or fragment off thrombocytes or fragment off platelets into the bloodstream. And as we're looking at platelets, to find some platelets, I'm just going to go ahead and back up here, backtrack. Oh, wrong button. There we go. And I'm going to go to the digital histology, excuse me, the histology guide site for blood. And as we're looking at a classic blood smear, platelets are the only thing that are smaller than 
the red blood cells. Or to use the technical language you need to use on your lab exam, the thrombocytes are the only thing that's smaller than the erythrocyte. So here I can see a thrombocyte, and then it's right next to a erythrocyte. So I drew, circled the thrombocyte, and I drew an arrow next to the erythrocyte. So class, that's it for blood and your exercise 24 lab objectives. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to shoot me an email or to post them in the class discussion board. And as always, happy studies.